<laughs> but it is good to be here with you today. I am Isaac Ackerman. I am an intern here at Glencliff United Methodist Church. I am um, a divinity student at Vanderbilt Divinity School, and I am so overjoyed to be here with you today. Um, today, we welcome you into this space, this space of reflection, the space of worship. This is an interactive space, so please share any thoughts, any updates in the chat box or in the Facebook comments, and we will join on Zoom for discussion and time together after our message from Neely here today. So before I make a few announcements, I hope you'll begin by sharing your joys, sharing your concerns, sharing whatever you need to in the chat area, either here on Zoom or over on Facebook Live. If you have a birthday this week, please let us know. We would love, 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 love to celebrate um, with you. So here are some announcements for um, this coming week from Glencliff. So we will join Belmont United Methodist Church um, for their Holy Week services. So their Maundy Thursday uh, service is at 6 p.m. on the 14th. Um, on Thursday, <laughs> and their Good Friday service is noon um, on the 15th, on Friday. Um, so please, please, please come and join us at those services. We would love to worship as a community on this holy, holy week uh, for us Christians. It also is quite the holy week for a number of different groups. There's, uh, we are celebrating Ramadan, um, the Muslim holy month. It is also going to be Passover is lining up with um, Christian Holy Week for our Jewish friends. I think there are some Hindu um, also celebrations happening this week. So it is a holy time um, all around the world for so many uh, people. So um, hopefully carry that with you this week and uh, that you receive some special blessings for the holiness that's going all around the world. Um, this next week is Easter Sunday, the big, big Sunday. So we will worship in person at Glencliff. Um, and we hope to see you there. So come in person, come online through Facebook Live, uh, however you'd like to worship with us, we would love to worship with you. Um, the Haven, which is the garden at uh, Glencliff, at our kind of Glencliff Commons, the church, the village, uh, the Haven, the garden, um, is having work days every other Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon. So their next workday is April 23rd. Keep an eye out on their social media pages for updates about these days. We would love to help make that space beautiful, abundant, um, and all sorts of wonderful things. So if you'd like to help out, please go look at their social media and join them on every other Saturday, 9 a.m. to noon. And then also at Glencliff, we are working to seek justice and help support the needs of our community. Please consider us in your monthly gift giving to directly support our ministries. You can give online either here at Facebook through glencliffumc.org, glencliffumc.org, or by mailing a check to P.O. Box 158392 here in Nashville, Tennessee, 37215 is our zip code. And then next, our big celebrations for birthdays. And feel free to add on to these. If we miss you, that, sorry, we are working with a number of different chat boxes today to get everything. But we will for sure message you and let you know that uh, we are celebrating with you. Or hopefully, I'll see it in some manner and we'll celebrate here on Zoom. Um, so Miss Judy's granddaughter Scarlett's birthday is on the 10th. Woo! We have Margaret Davis's birthday on the 12th. Woo! We have Bobby Hargrove's birthday on the 22nd. Woo! Happy birthday, Bobby. We have Josephine Gross's birthday on the 22nd also. What a great day. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Happy birthday to you all. We will not sing since we are online, <laughs> but we will sing in our hearts and maybe sing maybe off line or off Facebook Live, maybe in Zoom. We'll see. So make sure to join us on Zoom um, for those special announcements. Um, and then uh, today in Nashville news. Um, so a little bit, we're coming a little bit more to some serious news, y'all, as we prepare for worship. So today in news from Nashville um, involves first some beautiful artwork over at the Scarrett Bennett Labyrinth. 
Um, if you haven't been over there, it is a beautiful place and they constantly switch out um, kind of different artwork for to get your mind and get your heart in a place of worship. Um, and especially the Scarrett Bennett Center has been really dedicating themselves to a lot of work of justice in the last few years. Um, well, for the, well, their long history, um, and especially in the time that I've gotten to know them. So if you have time this week, or if you have access to see the installations that depict the Stations of the Cross, it is beautiful and moving. Um, each station is painted by a man living on death row here in Tennessee. Um, many of those uh, men are a few miles from where many of us are sitting here in this Zoom call. Um, and this installation is just incredibly powerful. As we prepare for Easter, um, to rem remember that the execution of Jesus and to uh, also for us Christians to proclaim the injustice of a state that seeks punishment an ending of life rather than restoration, love, and abundance of life. The sting of this reality is especially poignant this year as Tennessee prepares to execute Oscar Smith on, um, on Thursday. Next Thursday, 21st. So, Sorry, y'all. <laughs> it's real. So please join me um, in calling for our governor to grant clemency, or at least grant a reprieve in the case for Oscar Smith, for a myriad of reasons, for the inconsistencies in the case, and for just the injustice, the injustice of premeditated state executions that we as Christians know all too well. So hopefully there will be a link either posted in the Facebook chat or please reach out to us on the ways that you can be involved. Um, there are a number of different ways uh, that, yeah, that this reality is coming true um, in lots of different ways. So in light of those things, um, as we, uh, as Christians, as sometimes we just don't know where to turn in difficult times, but to turn to prayer. So if you would join me and prayers and letting us know prayer concerns, um, anything that's on your heart that you would like to lift up to the community that we can lift up to God. So today, first some names, we'll keep some anonymity. So um, I will just say some names. Um, maybe many of you will know who these people are and to hold that in your hearts. Um, so feel free to share that in the Facebook. I see that some Facebook prayer requests are coming through. Um, today, we pray for Carolyn, we pray for Sam, for Roy, for Andy, for Karen, for Josephine, for Nathaniel, for Bowie, for, for Annette, for Martha, for the village at Glencliff, for the Gatlin family, for Gina's, Justina's friend, Johnny, and also Devin's mother, for Bobby's sister, Philip, for the future and family. So please join me in bowing your heads or whatever way you would like to approach God today in prayer. And join me in saying, giver of life, and giver of light. Your steadfast love endures forever. Open our hearts to the blessed one who comes so humbly, so humbly on a borrowed colt. Open before us the gates of your justice that we may enter confessing in heaven and on earth that Jesus is Lord. Amen. So thank you all. Now we're going to transition into reading some scripture for our message from Neely here today. If you'd like to join along, we'll be in Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. On this Palm Sunday, please hear these words, listen to them, and let the divine work in you in ways that you least expect. 
So here we are, a lesson from Luke. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying this colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road, and as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen. They were saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Then some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, order your disciples to stop. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, then the stones would shout out. Amen. And may the spirit bring a special blessing on this reading here today. I'll now turn it over to Neely for a message. Thanks so much, Isaac. And I just want to greet everyone who's watching this today, I pray that it'll be a blessing to you. So as Isaac was saying, next weekend is Easter. We're gonna celebrate that big, right? It's the day of resurrection of Christ being raised from the dead and meeting his followers to show the scars, the scars of his earthly battle. So I wanna ask you a question. So when somebody dies who's close to you, you remember their life, right? The things you did together, the things they said, how the things that they said made you feel inside at the time and even now through memory. We want to do that now. Let's remember Jesus. Re-member, okay? Two words, re-member bringing Jesus back as a member of our lives. Jesus was a man who walked this earth for 33 years, and that's a short time for a life um, compared with many parts of the world today. When he was born, he was away from home as his parents had gone to answer a government census. Shepherds and magi came to them to pay homage to the one they knew was divine, God's own son. When Jesus was 12, he stayed behind at a temple, worrying his parents and teaching those much older than him about God and the Torah. The rabbis were amazed by him, and no doubt some were, didn't like being shown up by a 12 year old. His life on earth moved in various phases as a friend, a son, a brother, a carpenter, a teacher, a healer, an embodiment of God who we cannot see. But God walking among us on earth as our friend through Christ. So today is Palm Sunday, the day when Jesus was celebrated on earth gloriously, when he arrived back into Jerusalem and was welcomed in a way that people still celebrate around the world, a great leader coming into their midst. Instead of clapping, they waved palm branches and they laid down pieces of their own clothing for him to walk upon lest his feet get dirty. People still greet leaders in this way in various parts of the world. And I've had the privilege of seeing it firsthand in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So who were the people in that crowd? 
they were likely the ones whose lives had been changed by Jesus. Those whom he had healed from physical disorders and diseases. Those who he had eaten with when others had re- disregarded them as if they didn't matter. Those who were vilified by others, but whose homes he visited. Those living in poverty of body, mind, and spirit. We have people like that walking among us today too, don't we? If I were in the congregation, I'd be saying, can I hear an amen? Maybe y'all can put that in the chat. Because yes, we still have people walking among us living in poverty of mind, body, and spirit. When Jesus entered the temple at Jerusalem, he saw that people were selling sacrifices that could be offered there, meaning that people were being shut out of the temple who did not have the money to buy a sacrifice from the temple. I want to read that again. Let that sink in. So when Jesus entered the temple at Jerusalem, he saw that people were selling the sacrifices that could be offered there, meaning people were being shut out of the temple if they did not have the money to buy their sacrifice from the temple. These people could have brought with them something that truly mattered to them, that they were willing to sacrifice to God. But then they were told by the people at the temple gates that it wasn't good enough, that only the sacrifices that could be offered in that temple were the ones that those people sold for a price. Those people had a corner market on what was good enough for God. Jesus was furious. He destroyed their marketplace and cut into the cash that they would have made from their enterprise. Jesus embarrassed them in front of others. People don't take kindly to being humiliated in front of others, do they? Do we? So while some were waving palm branches and greeting Jesus as son of God, others were plotting for his demise. Jesus knew that if he returned to Jerusalem, he would face danger. He was warned by others, but he went back there anyway. He did so boldly and bravely to show that no earthly harm could stop him from living his purpose on earth to reconcile God and humanity, to show the true power of love that goes on even to execution, forgiving those who were still asleep and could not see what true kingdom on earth actually means. So today is Palm Sunday, a day of celebration, but we remember also how at the end of the day, Jesus was betrayed by one of his own, given over to the government to be tortured, tried, not convicted of any crime, and yet still executed by the state, hung on a cross to suffocate, the life drawn out of him, breath by breath by breath. Judas, who he had been friends with, who he had lived with, who had seen the miracles that Jesus performed every day while they were together, betrayed him. In the end, treasuring temporary gain of money over oneness with God. For us here today, we are bringing Jesus back in as a member of our society. And I want to hear an amen to that, because that's what the goal of Christianity is, is to remember Jesus into society, into being with us every day into guiding us and leading us individually along life's path and forming a society that does not disregard those who were disregarded in Jesus's time, but remembering them too, as Jesus did, eating at the table with them, being their friend, 
caring for them, overturning the tables when it is necessary. When we do this, when we remember Jesus into our society, he does guide us and we become the extensions of his life on earth. We become the extensions of his life on earth. We converse with people whom others revile, like those without homes, prostitutes, tax collectors, prisoners, those in need of healing from societal stigma and trauma and physical disease. This is the practice of our faith, something that we do not contain in our minds or hearts alone, but exemplify in our lives. If we are fully awake, we do not judge, but instead seek to understand one another's plight, greet each other as brothers and sisters, and do for them what Christ would do for them, love them fully into being. We heal as Christ did, recognizing science as God's gift to us that prolongs life and the enjoyment of life itself. As we turn over tables, as Christ did in the temple place, temple marketplace, we remind those who only seek temporary gain of money that people are sacred. The dollar is not almighty and that every one of us is worth being cared for as if we too are God's own son or daughter. Jesus, whose resurrection we celebrate next Sunday, is this man, fully human, fully divine, one who came to show us the way for God's kingdom to truly be experienced on earth. I pray that you take this message with you today and ask God your questions. Listen for that still small voice Watch for the signs of death around you in the execution that is scheduled here in the state of Tennessee, a state which proudly often proclaims of its Christian status. And yet here we are still executing after knowing the one who was executed and who was guiltless. How can we do these two things together? How can we love Jesus, love God, but hate those among us? God says that it's not possible that we cannot love God if we do not love the others that we can see. Let us be practitioners of love in this week ahead. Let us meet each other as brother and sister. Let us not exclude those from the table of God, which is wide and plentiful. Let us be one in God. Amen.